Hello everyone. Welcome to another tutorial of Spring Boot series by GR Academy and uh, thanks for joining again. So till now in our journey we have seen many important features of Spring Boot and uh, last couple of videos we are discussing uh, databases and we have finished discussion of SQL till now. So it is time for us to move ahead on Mongo uh, NoSQL database. So if you don't anything about Mongo don't worry because I'm going to put in detail course on Mongo so please subscribe so you won't miss it. Now moving forward let's get started with this tutorial. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about Mongo first. So uh, we all know that database is very important for any application and uh, based on our requirement we have various options to work with and initially people are using file based approach then vector algebra based uh, relational database came we know that uh, with SQL term and uh, then a new kind of database came no SQL. So no SQL is a little bit different approach than uh, regular SQL. It is a type or standard or a system and the full form of no SQL is uh, not only SQL or not SQL. So people often think that in no SQL we don't have query but uh, correct statement is we don't have SQL query. We have query but it is a different kind of query. So uh, in a relational database uh, we uh, we have something called SQL. Uh, structured English like query language right same way in NoSQL we have its own type of query SQL won't work with uh, NoSQL so hence the name is NoSQL and additionally NoSQL is a concept or standard or an idea and inside that NoSQL we have few categories such as a key value pair database and a document based database and a graph based database and a column oriented database. So uh, there are many vendors created this database and Mongo is a document based database and we have few examples of this such as Redis server is a key value pair based database then Mongo we have is document based database then we have Neo4j or infinite graph which is graph based database and we have Cassandra which is column oriented database. So the reason why uh, NoSQL is so much famous is because of its capacity to handle large amount of data and nowadays everything is online everything is on the on the internet so uh, we we really need to use this so that's why this is important and uh, there are few databases that support multiple features such as Dynamo database Dynamo DB which is from Amazon and which support document and key value pair both kind of database. So we will discuss this all information all about no, uh, no SQL in Mongo course but for now this is enough for us and here we are going to discuss MongoDB because nowadays Mongo, Mongo with Spring Boot is very famous. So moving forward for this discussion we first we will discuss built in Mongo or embedded Mongo same like uh, previously we have discussed S2 which was embedded SQL and here we are going to discuss uh, Mo embedded Mongo. And uh, for that we are going to need one Spring Boot project and uh, the, uh, for that uh, let me go to my browser and uh, here I am going to start.spring.io and I am putting Mongo in a group name then artifact I am putting test Mongo and uh, in uh, we are going to need few dependencies here. So first dependency is web as always because we are creating RESTful APIs and another one is a Mongo. So once I write Mongo you can see here we have one option called embedded Mongo database. So let me add that generate. Let me go to Eclipse and import that uh, project here. So I am going uh, file open project from file system directory and in our download folder we will have test Mongo. So it already detected it is Maven project and OK. Let me open this database and if I go in pom.xml you can see here we have one dependency called flap doodle embedded mongo. So let's connect this database with our uh, application right. So if you remember uh, previously we have discussed that uh, we need few things regardless of the type of the database or type of the application to connect any application with uh, our uh, with any database right. And those things were first thing we are gonna need is we need to connect this application with uh, database and database is uh, X is an another system so that's why we need the location of that system and uh, location is uh, URL and port number right second thing we need is uh, we need to fire some query we need to tell database that what kind of information what kind of data we want and uh, this is uh, this will be an, a set of instruction that we're going to pass to database and database will react to this uh, information and return back us uh, some data 
based on our condition. So for example, let's say you want list of employees that join after November 2019. So this is the set of instruction that we need to pass, right? So and this uh, set of instruction, we call it query set or instruction set. So another thing we're going to need is uh, that uh, if you see database speaks a different language because it's a different kind of uh, system, right? So we need someone or something in between that can translate our application based instructions into database level instruction, right? And uh, that's why we need a driver. So this, this driver can fulfill this requirement. And uh, another thing that we need is that every time we fire some query on the database, database will respond with some data, right? And uh, that data will be in the form of different object. It will be in the form of uh, database object, right? So we need to convert this database object into our application level object and we normally call it response uh, set or something like that. And sometimes we need the credentials, uh, user credentials based on the application and the type of the database, and the rights of the database, right? So uh, let's move forward and first let's add a driver in our uh, project, right? So for, uh, let me go to my browser and here I need to go to Maven repositories and uh, if I go here, and here let me uh, here I need to search for Mongo Java drivers so if you see here we have this MongoDB Java driver I'm going in 3.12 so let me copy this and I'm going to project and here let me paste it and if I do control shift F it will rearrange the code and let me delete this comment so once I save it it will download the dependency and if I run this application for first time. So this is giving some kind of error, right? It is saying exception opening socket. So a reason for getting this error is uh, our application is trying to look for the database, but database is not there. And uh, why it is trying to look for the application is because our Spring Boot uh, have a functionality of auto configuration. So every time we start our application, right? Our container will scan the our code and at the time of scanning it encounter this driver mongo driver in our uh, class path and it suspect that we need uh, we have mongodb right and it is trying to connect it with a default setting and default setting is this local host 27017 the reason why our, our database is not uh, starting is if you go in our pom and if you see here we have the scope test right so what is happening here is uh, all the embedded database is normally uh, for testing purpose. It is not for production use. So that's why the default scope for this uh, uh, dependency is test. So we need to remove this. Once you remove this and if I don't uh, provide anything, then Maven will take the default scope, which is a compile. So if now uh, let me save this and if and if uh, I restart this application, you can see here our database is starting. So these all logs are coming from database and database started with this port 58733. Okay, and it is connected with it. So, um, and uh, one more thing that uh, in our SQL discussion, we use S2 console uh, at the time of H2 and we use SQL developer for Oracle. And those were the clients, SQL clients. And over there, we can see everything visually, right? And uh, for, we don't have anything inbuilt client in Mongo in embedded Mongo case. So what you can do is you can use uh, uh, other client like SQL developer. But SQL developer was a client for SQL database. We need a client for Mongo database, right? So we have a couple of options such as Studio 3T. We have Robo 3T and we have Mongo Compass. So in in here we gonna use Mongo Compass. And for that, if you go in your browser. And if you search here for Mongo Compass, MongoDB Compass, you will have this link. I'll put this link into the description. You can download and install. Uh, to save time, I've already installed and uh, started that MongoDB. And if you go here, you can see something like this. So this MongoDB Compass is the client. And here you need to pass all the details, URL and port numbers. And it will connect and it, you can see everything visually. So uh, let's move ahead and see which uh, what is our URL, right? So we have this local host and port number is 58733. So I can go in my Mongo. So uh, I need to go here and fill in uh, connection fields individually because this option is if you want to pass everything in one single URL, and you can pass here or you can go here and fill in connection details individually. And here we have, we need to pass a URL which is local host and port number is 58. 733 
if I do hit connect, it will connect. And you can see here we have these two admin and local collection uh, built in with it. Okay, so now we need to, uh, we, need, we can start our coding part. So let me go in my Eclipse and here I need to start coding, right? Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to add some uh, default data uh, default data or initial data So in our Oracle case, we use SQL files schema.sql and data.sql and we put all the details over there and uh, It was up and running, but in this case we cannot do this uh, Because we cannot use SQL files, right? So we need to do this another way, but uh, in Mongo we don't have any anything like uh, that SQL files or something so in this case, we can use our uh, runner concept that we already discussed in our uh, previous tutorial. I'll put link into the description so you can go there if you haven't watched that before. And uh, for to use runner, it is very simple. We need to just implement it here. And what I'm going to do is implement and then I can do uh, command line runner. If you see here, we have this interface and here I need to write I need to go to source then override the method which is run method inside that so I need to write code here and um, I write anything here at the after application starting uh, automatically Spring Boot will run this function and here I can uh, um, initialize the database right so to uh, perform an operation of inserting uh, we have a couple of uh, ways to do that and uh, uh, so here we're going to discuss Mongo client first then we will go with Spring Data Mongo same as uh, in our SQL discussion We we did use uh, JDBC template first and then we discuss uh, Spring Data JPA here We're going to discuss Mongo client first, which is uh, directly related with driver and then we will discuss uh, Our Spring Data Mongo. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll keep comparing both the database no SQL and SQL So that way it is easy to remember both the database Otherwise, uh, it is confusing. So uh, there are a couple of ways to perform insert operation uh, on the Mongo and uh, those operations are you can use a Mongo client or you can use Spring Data Mongo. And so first we will discuss Mongo client and then later we will discuss uh, Spring Data Mongo. And uh, Mongo client is directly using uh, drivers. So without drivers, you cannot use a Mongo client. And uh, Spring Data Mongo is an another layer on top of that, right? So let's start with uh, Mongo client. So first we're going to need is the object of uh, Mongo client and so what I'm going to do is let me create one fun function which returns Mongo client and uh, let me put name get client. So uh, this is kind of uh, getting connection in case of SQLs and that's why I wrote a function so that uh, we can use uh, the reuse this function again and again. So uh, here we need to return Mongo object so new and Mongo client if I hit uh, control and space I can see multiple options uh, of the constructor so thing is you can create a mongo client object with uh, multiple ways and uh, you can pass your whole uh, URL together you can pass uh, uh, host and port separately you can pass uh, credentials also with it so you you see you can see here we have so many options and uh, in our case this uh, string host and port uh, option is perfect because here we need to pass local host and in port we need to pass the port of the database so and uh, we have port number is uh, 58733 so this function will return the object of mongo client and uh, one thing here we need to keep in mind is uh, this is kind of connection object of a JDBC and uh, if you remember in JDBC we used to close the connection after we finish our work with uh, database right otherwise it will keep using the RAM and it can slow down your application the so same way we need to close uh, this connection this Mongo client but one more thing here with Mongo client is that Mongo client uses connection pooling mechanism internally so best practice is to reuse this object again and again instead of closing the object so uh, moving ahead, if you remember the standard procedure of uh, performing database operation for SQL was something like first we need to get connection, then fire the query, then get the result set, then close the connection. In case of Mongo client also, we need to get the connection. This is Mongo client can fulfill that. Then we need to fire the query, get the result set and close the connection. So in case of Mongo client also, this procedure is the same. 
So we get this connection object through Mongo client, but we don't have query here, right? So now the discussion of NoSQL is that NoSQL doesn't mean that we don't have query. We have query, but it is not the form of SQL. And if you remember, we discussed that SQL is a structured English-like query language. And in case of NoSQL, we don't have stuff like SQL, but Mongo is a JavaScript based database. So we have JavaScript functions. For example, this is the SQL query, select star from employee where first name is John. So, it, so this query will return the list of all the employees whose first name is John, right? If you write same query in Mongo, we will have something like DB dot employee dot find then first name equal to first name colon John. In case of SQL database, the name of the database was a part of our uh, URL. Same approach we can use if you pass uh, the name of a database in your URL, but here we didn't pass it. So in case of Mongo, first we need to uh, select database explicitly, then we need to select collection of that database, and then we need to fire a condition. And in case of SQL, this condition was in the form of SQL query. And uh, in case of Mongo, we will have document object or basic DB object, which is a kind of a hash map over there. We will have key and value pair. But here a twist is key will be always string and uh, value will can be any object.